Hey, Foot Clan, today's show is brought to you by Handsome Fancy. Get your modern grooming products for that sweet, sweet beard at handsomefancy.com. Use promo code BALLERS for 15% off. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome to the show. Back at it. Welcome, welcome. It is Monday. Playoffs? Yeah. Monday, December 7th. Jason has a bounce to his step that has not been seen, literally has not been seen in, in nine years. <laughs> oh, in one, only that in was one true. specific league. Uh, welcome to the show. We are reviewing week 13. We got the Monday night game tonight. Going to talk about all the fantasy stud muffins and the guys that pooped in their big boy pants. And there was plenty of both. I I feel like we uh, we certainly hit on a lot of things this week. We missed on some things. We'll talk about both of those uh, when we get to our quick question here. But before we do, I want to thank everybody for joining us today on the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I'm Andy Holloway. This is uh, to my left here is Jason Moore, who's like I said, a little bit excited about That's his bye week. In my step. <laughs> And we've got Mike, the fantasy hitman, who is here, and uh, I, my first round playoff opponent in our league of record. Yes, that that is true. I was so close. So you're gonna get one to of buy, us, but it didn't happen. I'll be waiting for the winner. Yeah, and J- Mike, Mike, or I, you know, we can't help it. This is why I think the show is good, is because we really, really like fantasy football, and so next Monday it's very likely that one of us will be <laughs> not here <laughs> in a very bad mood. <laughs> Uh, because you know, it's not just going to be losing, it's going to be losing to the other person and it's going to be live on the air for the week. Yeah. What is amazing is that the three of us in our and league that's of just record, a built in water bet too, right? I mean, uh, head to head matchups yeah. are always yes. a water bet. So, yes. uh, what, what is amazing is that the three of us actually got the, the seating to where we are one side of the bracket in our league of record. So it's a guarantee that one of us will be in the championship game and a guarantee the two of us will not. That's true. That's pretty, true. Pretty so neat. as pretty long as it's sure. not Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> you can follow the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Uh, that's where you can. Uh, let me give you a little idea of what you can do on Twitter. You can uh, say, hey, thanks for that. That sweet start. Or you can say, gee, Andy, Vance McDonald. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sir. I started Vance McDonald too, and I didn't know he was going to get concussed. All right. Uh, oh, I, I saw on that coming on a mile his away. third target of the game. By the way, in the first quarter or whatever it was. So who knows what Vance McDonald would have done? The 49ers won the game. Yeah, Gabbert threw some balls. Looked good. Vance. I was just as unhappy. Yeah. Is my point. All right. Next time, I'll work on my concussion prediction protocol strategy. Thank you. All right. You can check us out on the web, thefantasyfootballers.com. Don't forget, we're on YouTube. You can subscribe to the show. We break the show up into segments on YouTube. We put the full shows on YouTube. Uh, you can see how depressed we are next week on YouTube. And we well, also post our water bets on YouTube when we uh, we make bets with one another during the week. And Facebook. And Facebook, yeah. Facebook.com slash the fantasy footballers. And we also want to thank everybody that has partnered with us on jointhefoot.com through the entire season. This is a year-round podcast. We're recording on into January and February and, and all the months that come after that sequentially. So usually, usually year-round, you hit You January. hit every month, yeah, almost every time. <laughs> so we're, we're going to keep it going, but a lot of that has to do with your support on jointhefoot.com. So we really appreciate that. We're an independent podcast, and it, your support goes a long way. So let's get right into it. Before we get to the rewind, I want to ask a quick question. And the question is, what did you learn this weekend, week 13? Who wants it? I, I mean, I know what I, I, know what I learned. <laughs> You you learned a lesson that I learned last week. Uh, but I, I'll I'll go first, and it's uh, you you got to buy into the heating up. We we right, been, explain that we've been talking lately about uh, uh, living by the NBA Jam rule of <laughs> of two games is heating up, three is on fire, and there were several players this weekend where they are coming off of two uh, two explosive games. And then they, they had hit. a big, big game. Then they hit big Doug time. Baldwin. Doug, Doug Baldwin's on fire. Doug Baldwin, Jeremy Hill, Russell Wilson, 
I mean, there was there was several guys C. where C.J. Anderson might have been heading there. He, he but the he ankle definitely injury. was, but he got hurt. Yeah. Also, also Eddie Lacy not on fire. No. <laughs> He's oh, there you go. Well, there you go. It doesn't um, always work because he was steaming pile of something, but not on fire. I guess when you when you stay out too late and you miss a curfew, when it when a grown man misses his curfew, <laughs> you sit him down and almost cost your team a victory. Ridiculous, grown man <laughs> with a curfew. All right, here's what I learned this week. I learned that the pre-draft hype from way long ago about what a great rookie running back class this was going to be was legit just like way before the draft of the year before we heard it's one of the best wide receiver drafts of all time and so that that news that was I mean we're talking seasons before look at the running the rookie running backs this week DJ uh, David David Johnson yeah Thomas Rawls. Well, Ra- Rawls wasn't part of the draft. No, well, no, but he's a ro- – no, no, no. <laughs> he he absolutely is one of – the the thing that was said about this rookie class was the depth, that it's just so deep. So you've got undrafted guys. You've got Buck Allen, Yeldon, all in the top seven, and that's not even including Todd Gurley, who's the best of the rookie running backs. So what that makes me think, what that made me think is, is there any news right now? Because this time last year, you already were hearing <clears> – <throat> about the upcoming rookie running back draft class. And I feel like, and I remember that the year before about the wide receivers. I don't feel like there's any like... We'll, oh, we'll get into it. I mean, I mean, I know we're a ways from that, but I'm just saying, you know, that's what I learned this weekend. So I, I really like the very early hype. Had huge games from some of those rookies, and uh, we'll talk about that. I learned a very valuable <laughs> lesson that Mike, <laughs> Mike learned a week ago. <laughs> Never sit Russell Wilson. My favorite tweet was uh of the week and was somebody quoting andy and it's it says from Andy. i'll show you i'll show you how to sit russell wilson <laughs> wrong i apologize i was wrong <laughs> this he, week, he was heading towards on fire <laughs> this week i will make russell wilson my sit of the week so that all um, of you listeners can start him and have fantasy gold you know he had like a 50 well it didn't really matter he had like a 55 yard touchdown run called back on a hold and then the next play he threw a bomb to, to, to doug baldwin for a touchdown he also scored his first rushing touchdown of the year yeah it's looking really good for seattle and the nfc needs to be on notice that's that's trouble when they're playing like this and tyler lockett was involved in a lot of third down plays if you notice so he's a guy who maybe next year we can see some relevance out of that position i'm not really sure but uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into some of the news. Weekly Rewind. All right, let's start with the panic alarm. Yeah. Uh-oh. 14 snaps for DeMarco Murray. What? <laughs> and they won. Yeah. And they won pretty handily. Yes, special teams. Yes, defense. Yes, Darren Sproles. Sproles looked better. I yes, mean, DeMarco Murray. Barner. DeMarco Murray hasn't looked good for several weeks in a row. And so they said, Chip Kelly came out and said that this is, uh, it was just a, a, a game plan specific for this matchup. But I'm not sure if I buy that because he's been getting worse for a couple weeks in a row. And, and Darren Sproles ran better. Darren Sproles ran very well. And so to me, this makes me curious about you know, Ryan Matthews. Ryan Matthews, exactly. DeMarco Murray had eight carries for 24 yards. Kenjin Barner, nine for 39. Darren Sproles, 15 for 66. Mm. Well, that mm. does not exactly give you confidence heading into your fantasy playoffs, does it? No, it does not. And Murray is one of those very unfortunate players that you, if you have Murray, you probably, you probably have to play him. You have no choice. Yeah, and that's something that hopefully you have some depth because you've been signing the guys that we've been talking about, the Buck Allens or David Johnsons or Char West or Spencer Ware, those oh, type Char, of guys. Char West. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Yeah. Another va- another viable starting running back. Yes. You know, and Fair. and we can debate that on on the the workload there. But Johnny Manziel set to probably be the quarterback to finish the year. Um, <laughs> Sending the clowns. <laughs> yeah, dude. What was it thirty seven to three? Mike Patton is not long for the uh, Cleveland area 
CJ Anderson. He can get back to uh, his professional wrestling career as, <sighs> as Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> Along with the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. Uh, <laughs> CJ Anderson, what happened there? Ankle injury. Ankle injury left the game. He says it's not a big deal. Nah, and to they which, all, they to all which say I that. say, or is it? Because the first ankle injury was not a big deal. This is really sucky timing for Anderson as he was coming on the the running def- running offense for the Broncos was really hitting. Now, Ronnie, does that make Ronnie Hillman a league winner? Ronnie Hillman didn't really do much. He didn't explode or anything. And uh, Thompson yeah. was getting some some decent carries, so he might be a, a guy to pick up off the wire this week Mike, as we evaluate things. Since you made C.J. Anderson your start of the week, how sad were you to see Thompson get so much work? Like, they weren't I giving was, it to Hillman. Well, and Anderson came out, and he was – he started the game well. Yeah. It was just one of those things, you know. Like like Andy said, I'll work on my uh, predicting of ankle injuries yeah. for next week. Hey, you know what? I may have missed huge on Russell Wilson, but I know how to sit Stevie Johnson. Yeah. All right? And predict injury. Yeah. Because Stevie <laughs> Johnson had no targets and then went out with a groin injury. So uh, felt good about that one considering he was a 19-point scorer the week before. But that's news for you guys, C.V. Johnson owners. Follow the practice reports this week. That offense, that team, you have to wonder how they, much they're going to have left. I'll tell you what's going on with that team. They got Arian Foster's brother is their personal trainer is what's going on in that team. That hasn't worked out for Arian Foster. Because everyone is just getting hurt. Everybody. Yeah, I know. And now they have to travel to Kansas City. Uh-oh. <laughs> and Justin Houston, I think, has the potential to be back in that game. They sat him down this week, last minute. That could be trouble. Remember yeah. early in the year, Mike, when you were excited about Phillip Rivers' matchup against Kansas City? Yeah. That yeah. seemed like <laughs> that was uh, many moons ago. <laughs> yeah. It was a fortnight. A couple other injury notes. Travis Benjamin went down with a shoulder injury. Uh, LaShawn McCoy had a concussion test in the locker room but came back, so no concussion? It was, if he came back, you have to assume it was a concussion. <laughs> That's a fair point. Or they paid off the dock. Well, is it like a Big Ben concussion or a regular concussion? <laughs> uh, Vance McDonald, as we said. Concussion, which yeah. leaves Blake Bell as the only viable tight end on that team. He's worth uh, a deep league flyer potential because he does target the tight end, and Gabbert led them to a victory in Soldier Field. Vernon Davis with a concussion. It is concussion week. Yeah. Matt Hasselbeck last night, shoulder back injury. Talk about the implications for a Hasselbeck injury if he can't play next week. Uh, the, the implications would be that the Colts would be a terrible – NFL team. You're not signing Charlie Whitehurst. I am not signing Charlie Whitehurst, but I am signing whoever they play. Who do, who do the Colts play next Jacksonville. week? Jacksonville. I would I would play the Jacksonville D against that Colts offense. And I'm not while while I would probably play other people over them, I I'm not joking that I think they would be legitimate against Charlie Whitehurst and uh I mean you saw during the game, right, how late the calls were getting in every play because they're doing that translation thing where where they're still running an offense with you know one with with the old play calling and now they've got a new offensive coordinator that didn't know the terminology and so he's sending it to the offensive coordinator who's then s- translating it and sending it in now you put charlie whitehurst in there that's an offense i don't want to be a part of well I, it's a good point even if jacksonville's defense isn't great the potential for a big mistake by whitehurst for a pick six for a fumble uh you know Return for a touchdown is oh, there. Speaking of pick six, yeah, <laughs> we got. <laughs> oh, we do need to do a little water bet review, by the way. <sighs> no, because no. TJ Yeldon no. rushed for a touchdown, and you owe me no. three waters. His three. First, his first. That's his first touchdown on the ground, right? Yeah, I, th- I think so. <clears throat> I think. First or second? I can't remember. <laughs> so, pretty nice. How yeah. did How did Gordon do? Um, <laughs> Melvin Gordon did as Melvin Gordon do. <laughs> Fumble. Uh, yeah, fourth fumble of the year. These rookies, uh, that's that's another thing I've learned is that um, the rookie running backs don't know how to hold on to the ball. David Johnson fumbled as well, uh, but he also did great. I started the week. All right, last thing before we get into. <laughs> Just whispers it in there. Yeah. Very yeah, nice. Because we all were really down on David Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so last thing I want to mention is the, uh, the, the mystery has been, I mean, Austin Severian Jenkins is back. He has overcome whatever practice problems he had. He wasn't just practicing chess. 
He only played 21 to 71 snaps in his return, but he was the second most targeted receiver on that team. Dropped a touchdown. Dropped a touchdown. Still had, I think, three or four catches. But pay attention to him if you're desperate, like me, <laughs> who has a Gronkowski and needs somebody. So uh, what are we doing next here? So before we get into our stud muffins and, and the pooped in their big boy pants segments, I want to take a second to thank our sponsor of the day, Handsome Fancy. Listen, fellas and ladies. Christmas is right around the corner. Handsome Fancy has just restocked the oils and the creams for their beards. Get a delightful, delightful citrus scent that is not overpowering. It is invigorating. It will refresh your morning. It will condition your beard. These are all natural, organic products that will keep things tight and right. It is wonderful. Every time I do it in the in the studio, everyone knows. They go, hmm. Hmm, I like that. Did when someone you just use the beard oil? Yeah, did someone just handsome fancy? Can they get a discount? Yeah, absolutely with our code BALLERS get 15% off and like I said, Christmas is around the corner. You want one of those special special gifts that you can't just get at a big box store? handsomefancy.com. There's nothing a bearded man likes more than to know their wife is thinking about their beard. That is a factually accurate statement. <laughs> All right, let's get into the stud muffins. This week's fantasy stud muffins. You notice I let mine grow out a little bit more? It's a little bit thicker. And I appreciate thicker. it. I yeah. appreciate it. A little yeah. Christmassier. <laughs> a little bit more Christmassy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I've got the Christmas lights up this weekend, by the way. Ooh. Yeah. I even, I even put some on the tree. Wow. Like we're, up, we're upgrading here. Fancy. <laughs> All right. Uh, quarterbacks. Russell Wilson. Oh, my. 21 for 274, three touchdowns, nine for 51, and a touchdown on the ground. Absolutely looked like he was toying with the defense, a very good defense. And so, uh, here to stay, and now has the Ravens next week. And what, what Russell Wilson's been doing is getting it done in the pocket. That's been what's made the fantasy jump. I'll tell you he's what. He's always had the baseline of running, but now he's passing the ball mostly to Doug Baldwin. The problem for Russell Wilson was that Jimmy Graham character. Yeah, get him out of here. <laughs> but, I mean, that's a funny correlation. Of course, that is not serious. People. Yeah, yeah. Well, Russell Wilson's playing very well. That team is playing very well. So you can start Russell Wilson very, very confidently moving forward. Do we need to say anything else about uh, Mr. Cam Newton? Cameron Newton? Nope, not at all. He's he's a beast. You start him every week. Cam Newton had a monster week, five touchdowns. Marcus Mariota had a monster game on the ground, including an 87-yard run, 20 for 268 in the air, three touchdowns, nine for 112 on the ground. Takes on the Jets in New York next week. Temper the expectations, but Mariota is getting it done. He has had... Three of these huge games this year. What is the potential for Mr. Mariota to kind uh, of... I mean, the, the Jets' defense, is they are not what they were to start the year. But I, I don't know. Can you really trust the rookie in this situation where the Jets the Jets are playing for... Uh, for these? It's a big game. They're playing for the playoffs. Yep. At home. I'm, uh, I don't know. It, 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 we've seen the potential is there for the monster games, but for all the monster games, he also gives you sub-double-digit games. So, All right, other big games. Blake Bortles, yeah. first five-touchdown game for Mr. Bortles. Tyrod Taylor, Tom Brady, Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, and Big Ben. Which of these guys is worthy of a fantasy discussion? Fitzpatrick having another great game. He got the game ball. For his comeback, that was a twenty to ten game. It looked like that game was all but over. Brandon Marshall, man, Brandon He's Marshall good. and Ryan Fitzpatrick are a combo. Brandon yes. Marshall yeah. now has, I believe, a thousand yards receiving for four different franchises. First, first uh, ever receiver in history. Wow. Yeah. He must be okay at the wide receiver position. Yeah. yeah. For Ryan Fitzpatrick, the what we've always talked about is he's a great fantasy quarterback to start the year, but when will winter Ryan Fitzpatrick show up, and we know that winter is coming, but he's, hey, win he's, winter's winter is here. here, and he has continued to to have his high powered passing attack. At this point, I f I feel comfortable starting him, especially against the Titans. Yeah, me too. I'm That's not really the question. Week one of the playoffs potentially against the Titans, but at home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I would I think that's fine. So, I'm would you rather it. play him, or would you rather play Tyrod Taylor at Philadelphia after that good big Oof. win from Philly? Uh, if it. I think I would rather start Ryan Fitzpatrick. I, yeah, he's I think safer. he's safer. Tyrod Taylor probably has the higher ceiling. Okay. All right. And then Big Ben did 
what Big Ben does. It didn't look that way to start the game. In fact, when <laughs> the way the game began, I was going, "Oh no, we, you know, we said start Big Ben over over Brady." Uh, in a lot of situations, he ends up with three sixty four and four, and you know the weapons just eventually catch up to the defense. It seems like you know you cannot stop Antonio Brown and Martavis Bryant. You know, Wheaton scored another touchdown. I had a dream last night that Martavis oh. Bryant scored like six touchdowns. So <laughs> you had the dream after the game. <laughs> yes, yes. So I mean, okay, he's so good. He's you know some of his. I mean, you've said this before, Andy, but like Randy Moss, he's the only guy that I feel like sometimes you see him streaking down the sideline and he's just two yards from the defender. He catches it in his own little planet and and runs away. Yeah, it's just really hard to stop speed every snap of the entire game, and he just runs fly pattern. So, and how about Blaine Gabbert? Are you? <laughs> is he in the the stud muffins? He's got to be in there, man. Why? Uh, it's, one touchdown pass. He had seventy five yards. I on contend the ground. that he should not be. Uh, no, one touch and seventy five yards and a touchdown on the ground, my man. Yeah, I know. That's in our in our scoring format. Thirty three points. Okay, that's called a big game. All right. Yeah, Blaine Gabbert. Took over time, but all right. <laughs> it did. You, you get there, you get there. He he finished as the 10th quarterback in standard all scoring. Right. So all right. you know. he finished as the one. Uh, I wouldn't start him. <laughs> I agree. He's got I Cleveland agree. next week. I still wouldn't start huh. him. Yeah, I, I, maybe in deep, 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 deep leagues. In twos. Yeah, twos, two quarterback, quarterback league. All right, wide receivers that blew up. We don't need to talk about that top guy. Uh, no. <laughs> I had to yeah. face the – I had to face the uh, wide receiving core that is Allen Robinson. The target monster. Oh, I thought there was a raptor. <laughs> it was very similar. Allen Robinson's having a humongous year, guys. Yes. yes. Humongous. 10 for 153 and three touchdowns yesterday. Well, I guess we know that he will get his regardless of Allen Hearns' availability. Yeah, he's a stud and... You just need to treat him like he was. 65 for almost 1,100 yards and 11 touchdowns on the year so far for Allen Robinson. Yeah, and we're in week 13. That puts Allen Robinson year to date. He is the number four wide receiver in the National Football League fantasy standard scoring. Yeah, that's just an impressive, incredible year. A lot of it has to do with his second year mixed with Bortles and his maturity and the willingness for that offense to finally wing it a little bit. You know, put it in the air. Let these guys make tough catches. It seems like Allen Robinson cannot be guarded on a slant pattern. I don't know how many of those 11 have been slants into the end zone. Well, and the thing that makes him so valuable in the end zone is that he is so great at contested catches. When you put it up for him and another guy in kind of one of those jump balls, he normally comes down with it very similar to Des Bryant, who we said before the year was his closest statistical uh, counterpart. So. So there, there were a lot of big wide receivers that had games, and they don't really have question marks around them. You know you're starting them in the playoffs. That's Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham Jr., Brandon Marshall. By the way, he caught 12 balls out on 13 targets, so a really efficient game for Brandon Marshall. A.J. Green had another huge game. Hey, he's back, A.J. Green. Well, yeah, people can't doubt A.J. Green. Well, you they can't. They you, can't. I, I understand that, that you cannot doubt Green, but he is, he's been a little disappointing. But let's talk, about, let's talk about some of the guys. I'm going to ask you about them. They had big weeks again, or or big weeks that aren't necessarily started or or kind of question mark guys. So let's start with Jeremy Macklin. Jeremy Macklin was nine for ninety five, two touchdowns. He had, I believe, a one yard run and like a one yard pass, something to that extent. Uh, what is the thought on Jeremy Macklin moving forward? Because he's had a couple great games. You know, we talked about the fact some of his lower games he was matched up with Denver in one of them, and then the other game was a blowout. Because of the defense. So do you guys buy into Macklin moving forward or is he still going to dub, you know, give you a dud? I buy into Jeremy Macklin now because we looked back at the matches and I even gave him a a semi apology last week for mentally thinking he had been bad, but his matchups really played against him. And like you said, that game where they blew him out. Well, his matchups going forward are San Diego, Baltimore, Cleveland, and Oakland. So those are, those are all matchups where I don't expect him to, be getting three for 48 how many games does he have left well that's four he went through week 17 week 17 is playoff uh, playoffs for some right he has to only accumulate 133 yards Uh, in those four games to hit a thousand yards and get you wet yeah because we made that bet well good i'm i'm happy for him great jeremy (laughs) 
Um, I'm not wishing ill on you or any so you're ankle injuries. Starting Macklin. Yeah, absolutely. I'm starting Macklin mm-hmm. with confidence. How about Doug Baldwin? <sighs> because now, Doug now Doug Baldwin has three straight weeks. Yeah, he of is monster game. He is on fire with five for ninety four and two touchdowns. The problem with Baldwin is still the targets. I need seven targets. That's seven targets. That that's not the volume you expect from a guy who's going to have a monster week. He's what? been highly efficient, but can you trust him with that? I. Well, that's. Yeah. I guess you're making the point with your efficiency comment, but let me give you some perspective. On the year, Allen Robinson has 65 catches, okay, for that okay. 1080 and 11. Right. On the year, Doug Baldwin has 55 catches and eight touchdowns and almost 800 yards. So, no, he's not a superstar, but he should be, I think, very firmly in the in the wide receiver 2-3 ca- category. Oh, yeah, and, there, I mean, absolutely. You're, to throw him out there, right? One of the reasons <clears throat> that you can get that out of Doug Baldwin – very similar to what we're seeing with Ted Ginn Jr. You have a team that runs, 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 whether it's through the quarterback or, or you know, the running back, and then, or even wide receivers at times, and then, in, in Carolina's case, they run, 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 take a deep shot. Run, 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 take a deep shot. Well, Seattle hasn't been doing that for the first half of the year, but we've seen that's what's opening up here in Seattle lately over these last few games is that they're throwing the ball a little bit deeper. So, while... You know, he might only get five catches. Ted Ginn, I, I would, I, I feel completely confident starting Ted Ginn, uh, and he's probably not going to get more than five receptions in a game on a on a general week. But it's still going to be. And Ted Ginn drops a, a seventy yard touchdown oh every every single game. Goodness, two of them last. Yeah, game. two of them, and he ended up with two touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. He got two touchdowns, five for eighty, and two touchdowns. He's in our uh, stud muffin section. But he dropped two of them. So when you say starting, though, give people some context because they don't – I mean, what does that even mean? So, starting them over who? Starting them where? I think it's going to be a little bit matchup dependent. You're going to – I don't see going up against a top flight defense and wanting to start these guys, but I would start them as a as a wide receiver two, which means on, on most rosters – You would start I, Ted Ginn as a wide receiver two now. Ted Ginn I would start as a wide receiver two in a good matchup. Absolutely. Well, we know his matchups moving forward. So next well, week – Let's take a Atlanta look. next week. Next week is Atlanta – uh, the w- two weeks after that is, is Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> I just don't remember the game in between. I think the game in between is New Orleans. Uh, really? No, no it's New York. No. Gi- oh, it's the, the Giants, Giants, which is like New Orleans light. <laughs> so all, all three of those matchups could be argued as as uh at least mid tier to good. Yeah, mid tier. So to are good. you really? I would your say, playoffs are on the line. You're throwing Ted Ginn out. I would throw Ted Ginn as a wide receiver three against Atlanta and a wide receiver two against the New York Giants. Mm. That's how I see it. All right. I mean, if you if you look at what he's done this year and how many touchdowns he accumulates, his yards per catch, I think he's I think he's a safe option right now. With safe? Oh my gosh! I think we just disagree. Fair enough. I, uh, you know, he he had five touchdowns against New Orleans. He had no catches the week before. That's what I'm afraid of with Ted Ginn. Thirty catches on the year. So well, that, that's that, where that's where I'm concerned about that's, Ted Ginn. That's where it's a that's where it's a matchup. I mean, Dallas's defense has been great all year, and if you can't if you can't get that guy free in the deep, it's like a it's like a Deshaun Jackson. So maybe safe isn't the right word. That's why I think he is matchup dependent. But if you've got a defense where you can get behind them, which is I don't really see that that much in Atlanta, which is why I say a wide <clears> receiver <throat> three there because they don't really give up a lot of big plays to the wide receiver. They haven't all year, even despite uh, you know implosion right now going on in Atlanta. Their defense has still not given up big plays to the wide receiver too much. So and here's here's the crazy thing about Ted Ginn because we're, we were talking about Doug Baldwin as well. Doug Baldwin on the year has 64 targets. Ted Ginn on the year 75 targets. So drops. That has to do with a lot of deep passes. Yeah. Oh, well, deep passes and to deep. catch 35 so, and Baldwin has 55. Let me ask you. So yes. who would you rather start, Ted Ginn or Doug Baldwin? Who oh, would Baldwin you rather- all day. Okay, and you'd rather sign him as well. Are you in agreement there, Mike? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. The that the Dallas game is weird for Ted Ginn Jr. with with no targets. But I mean, when your your defense does, yeah, they ran the, the ball. entire of the entirety of the lifting, it, then it makes sense that that uh, because right. Ginn is the deep guy. I think if you need a home run, I think I think Jason's right on the money. I'm not saying sit down Ted Ginn in every circumstance. I just wouldn't call him safe. I don't think that's the word I would use. Doriel Green Beckham, five for one nineteen and a touchdown. 
this was uh, indicative of what you see from wide receivers facing the Jacksonville Jaguars this year. So I don't know how much I read into it. Do you guys get a different feeling than I do that nope. this was a good game? This is a good game. Yep. It was a turned into a crazy really, game. Really, really high scoring game. So that's it, somebody's got to score. So Green Beckham did. All right. Stud Muffins at the running back position. Jason alluded to it earlier with the, the rookies and their contributions right now. Javorius. J- Javorius Allen, TJ Yeldon, David Johnson, uh, Thomas, who else? Rawls. Thomas Rawls, all had big weeks. I don't think any of those guys are getting sat down, but maybe we need to kind of assure David Johnson owners of the future. So somebody do that for us. Well, Chris Johnson or uh, Chris Johnson is out. He's going to be out the rest of the way for fantasy. Um, and then you have... Andre Ellington as really the only other guy to worry about coming back. If Andre Ellington is right now expected to miss this next week. So I think if that happens, you've got David Johnson taking another lion's share week. I believe he got 22 carries this week. So if that's the case, he is going to firmly establish himself as a leading running back. If he gets another 22 for 100 and a touchdown, how do you then have Andre Ellington come back hurt and say, hey, Andre's ahead of you. It's not going to happen. I don't I don't even think they approach it that way. I don't think they approach it like, oh, Ellington's going to come back and suddenly become the between-the-tackles running back. I think right. they want Ellington to – especially him coming off an injury, the whole reason he can't sustain being a between-the-tackles guy is because he gets hurt. He just comes back, and David Johnson is the CJ – or, I mean, is the Chris Johnson, and Ellington's the Ellington, just like he's always been. That's how I approach it, too. And he was your start of the week, so a, a big week. It was funny because – Arians said he'd have about 25 touches. I believe he had 24 touches. That's that's a great game, and the game was put away late, and Kerwin Williams even had a 35-yard touchdown run in the game. Yep, the, and the thing you got to be careful for is – or not be careful, but just that be wary is the fumble. He fumbled again, got bailed out uh, because the Rams recovered it, and they had a foot out of bounds, so Cardinals uh, kept possession. But David Johnson got uh, a little bit of a benching after that. Yeah, you can't do that. Certainly a playoff team trying to secure the potential uh, home field. You can't fumble the ball. But all the rookies, they don't understand that for three or four years, <laughs> apparently. All right, so Matt Forte, a big bounce back game for him. 21 for 84 and a touchdown, 5 for 39 through the air. We like Matt Forte in the playoffs, the fantasy playoffs. Yep. Okay. James White had a, uh, a game of necessity is what I'm going to choose to call it. Two for four on the ground. He's not getting the ball between the tackles, but... 10 catches, 115 yards, and a touchdown. He went full Deion Lewis roll. Yeah. I would so agree with you. So the question is, does he stay there? Uh, no. I would say no. Yeah, I would, I would say that just as Because he had a good plan. game two games ago, then he didn't do anything last week, and then he had a big game this week. It's going to be uh, – you know, he, the potential's there. The potential's there if Gronkowski's out. Yeah. I would I certainly mean, pick him up, at, you know, because he could – Remember what you said him. about Devontae Adams? He stinks. Yeah, what do you what do you say about Brandon LaFell? He stinks. Goodness gracious. I had a <laughs> I had a Twitter poll asked to me of who stinks more, Brandon LaFell or Devontae Adams. And honestly, these guys are like somewhat mirror images of each other as far as as far as in the brain. In the brain, I feel like these guys are the same in the, brain. the same guy. They have Hall of Fame quarterbacks throwing them the ball that they cannot catch. Quarterbacks that really need them to catch the ball because their their weapons are weak right now. Yeah, goodness gracious. Ah, catch yes. the In ball. the brain. Uh, Danny Amendola, welcome. Welcome to my side, fellas. Oh, I've been I've been on the Amendola I know, just, side. No, it was the – I had – I had, I've been waiting for LaFell to yes. catch a deep ball. They keep trying. It's been 900 different tries. He's caught none of them. Well, and what's crazy, so on that Twitter question that I was asked, I said who stinks more was Devontae Adams, not Brandon LaFell. And the reason is because last year, Brandon LaFell finished as the number 18 wide receiver. We know he can. What in the world is going on? Why can't you catch the ball? Yeah. that is. I think that's what Brady was saying every time LaFell or – I mean, Amendola dropped a pass. Look, Keyshawn Martin dropped passes. He was threading the needle and couldn't finish the job. So, uh, Tom Brady got so tired of Brandon LaFell that he said, screw this. I'm, I'm playing catching. wide receiver. <laughs> Danny Amendola, throw me the ball. I'll show, show you how to catch. <laughs> that play was awesome. <laughs> Unbelievable trick play. And Tom Brady gets a 36-yard reception. There you go. <laughs> All right, we talked about it earlier. Jeremy Hill. 
22 for 98 and a touchdown. He's on fire. Is he back? Is he back, Mike? Or could oh. at any moment next week, Pittsburgh, very likely that he gets stuffed up quite a bit. Could he just be – could it be the Gio Bernard show against the Steelers? It absolutely could be. So, yeah. The matchup makes me worried about the on fire continuing. It, that's the, the worst part of this Jeremy Hill ascension is his playoff schedule. Uh, <laughs> so, it's it, – it, Gio Bernard was used hardly at all. I know. Hardly at all I know. in this last game. So and and everything game flowed to Hill like we we were talking about could that happen in the it, against the Browns and sure did sure did that it was the Jeremy Hill show just running out the clock but the, you they still have to give him work I I think the team I, the the argument I've been going to all year of the Bengals knowing they have to get Jeremy Hill going if they want to win in the playoffs it's, it's an interesting thing because this is where fantasy and reality seem to diverge in my opinion. I don't think that the Bengals coaching staff looks at the game and sees 22 for 98 and a touchdown and Jeremy Hill's a superstar. I think they look at it the way it played out, which is we're playing Cleveland, we're up by 400 points, and we need to run the clock out. And so uh, is it good to see those numbers? Yeah. Is it expected of him by the coaching staff? Probably against Cleveland. And so it's a matter of can he do it against a, a, a good team, Pittsburgh, when they need it to win the division, to, to right. secure. I mean, right now, the, the Patriots have dropped to third in the AFC. This is a competition for the home field's advantage. Frank Gore, this last game against Pittsburgh, ran well on them. You saw several plays where he busted a decent run. But then what happens is Pittsburgh's offense turns on fire, and you've got to go to the you got to go to the air. You've got to match him with that assault. So it's hard for that type of runner, for a Jeremy Hill type runner, to stay in the game because they need, you know, you, you saw Frank Gore have a pretty good game because he got three in the air for 50 yards and a touchdown. That's where you kind of have to go, you know, tip for tat with, sure. with the Sure. If they're Steelers. coming back, it's going to be Geo. Yeah. Yeah, good point. All right, we got to go through these real quick. Tight ends. Richard Rodgers, 8 for 46, 146 in a touchdown. We talked about him. Is he kind of the top target on, on waivers, or are there some other guys? If you need a tight end, I think you have to be looking at Richard Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers is looking at him every play. Delaney Walker, Charles Clay, Scott Chandler, and Greg Olson all had big weeks. Walker continues to just ho-hum, do what Walker does. Yeah. 8 for 92 in a touchdown. Reliable as pie. Charles Clay, four for 66 and a touchdown. His touchdown it was, was, was so wide, wide open. <laughs> Nobody covered him. It's, it, they must be fantasy players. He could have and just knew that Charles Clay <laughs> yeah. has been not used for weeks. Tyrod Taylor could have punted the ball and, and, <laughs> and Clay could have just, you know, fair caught it. You're right. He really, really could have. Uh, I, I don't think that would have been legal. Uh, <laughs> Scott Chandler did get in the end zone, four for 61 and a touchdown. Sure did. It's still painfully obvious he's not Rob Gronkowski every route he runs, but he is useful because some of those other guys are not useful right now catching the ball. So Scott Chandler, I think, is fine with Gronk out. Do we agree? Yeah, yeah. That, it, absolutely. He's a serviceable guy. Rodgers or Chandler? Rodgers. Uh... Chandler you, for me I just I mean I, I assume you can only say that when Gronk is out yeah so oh yeah yeah so Rodgers if you need a pickup Rodgers can serve you through the playoffs whereas you know you how long think, are you gonna you be think starting? Rob, Rob Gronkowski might be back for next week uh any, no. any hope that Rob I don't think Rob comes be. back from a matchup against Mike I think there's a little hope I, th I think there is very little I hope. want to believe uh and, and just real quick before we get into the other guys the I don't know if you saw the the Brandon LaFell garbage can vine was recirculating again yesterday. Legitimately, if he caught that uh, kind of inside slant pass at the end of the game on that drive, he probably gains 20, 25, 30 yards, and Goskowski gets a shot at the end of the game to tie it. He, I mean... they every, To be fair, every receiver on the last drive took a turn dropping a ball. So. They did. It ended on four consecutive drops, I think. Something yeah. to that extent. So, all right, we need to move on. Pooped in his big boy pants. Yeah. These quarterbacks are so great uh, for me personally. Because you, you because were deciding I, between I all cycled, of them. I cycled between all three of these guys <laughs> of who am I going to start. Uh, so number one on this list was Phillip Rivers, uh, who was 18 for 202, which is not a terrible game. He just didn't throw any touchdowns. So for fantasy, it killed you. Pretty terrible game. Yeah. It's very similar to the next guy. And Jay Cutler, <laughs> 18 for 202 yards with uh, 
uh, no touchdowns in a great matchup against San Francisco. And then the best one of all, Ryan Tannehill. Oh, man. Nine completions, 86 yards. A quarter, this is a 80, quarterback. 86, 86 yards. And, and he had a 40-yard touchdown a, pass. A monster touchdown to Devontae Parker, which if you have not seen the Devontae Parker catch, the guy jumped at least four feet in the air. You want to know what he looked like? Superman? A first-round draft pick. Yeah, yeah, it was... Good thing they're using him now. They, now that the he... season's gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting... This is what happens. You, if you want to go to NFL.com to look up a stat line, you get a commercial. Yeah. And then the commercial plays through your computer into your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just blows my mind. I mean, so Dan Campbell said he wants to run the ball. We did see that. We saw Lamar Miller finally oh, Lamar crack Miller was great to that 20-carry line. So he had 20 carries, which we've been waiting for forever for him to get. Uh, but they're not joking. They don't want to pass the ball, apparently, because that means the rest of the game, Ryan Tannehill had 40 yards. Yeah. that's What? That's brutal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, like I said, those I was deciding between all three of those, and I was, man, I, I got to get this decision right. It was it was a big trick on me because they were all the wrong decision. So we talked about it a little bit last week, the fact that maybe some of the, the discussion in the offseason and heading into the next year of drafting will have to do with how early do you take running backs. We had a guy in our league who had top picks and looked like he, ha he went into the season. Marshawn Lynch, Eddie Lacy, DeMarco Murray. And when you looked at it after the draft, Scary. there was a shimmer. I mean, it was as beautiful as could be. Now look at Eddie Lacy, and look at Marshawn Lynch, and look at DeMarco Murray. They need to be on your bench. <laughs> I mean, Eddie Lacy pooped his big boy well, pants in the greatest fashion I think I've seen all year. The, it, well, it, he got benched. Well, like, that is pooping your pants. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that, but w what I'm saying is he got benched. He got punished. Sure. Maybe that's why he it's, was late to the meeting. Maybe he pooped in his pants. <laughs> He was out, and he's like, "Dude, did I you ever think of that, McCarthy? Come Maybe on, he McCarthy. missed curfew because he, you know that's a he, big business, the adult diaper business. There are a lot of people out there. Well, we know that Joseph Randall <laughs> allegedly may have pooped his pants when he stole underwear and cologne. Right? Maybe there was a similar right? situation. Right? These things happen, McCarthy. This is some, real life. Sometimes you gamble and lose. If you guys know what I'm talking about, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't lose that gamble, Mike. You shall never gamble when just, coming to said podcast. Saying, <laughs> sometimes you gamble and you lose. Uh, so, but my but my point is, <laughs> is next week Eddie Lacy could firmly be back as the running back. One. I do agree. That is that is the right perspective. He was not just terrible. He was benched, and so if they forgive him in one week because they'd like to make the playoffs, this would be a good time to continue handing him the ball. That being said, let's go through some of these guys. Todd Gurley. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Does Nick Foles hurt Todd Gurley, or does Nick Foles hurt Todd Gurley? <laughs> I would agree that with the second one. I think Nick Foles very much hurts Todd Gurley. He's, oh. uh, you know, this is... I, I know that he had 100 yards or a touchdown in several games, but that was a, a very convenient way to ignore the fact that his his yards and his carries were trending downward for about four or five weeks in a row because he got into the end zone a couple of times and, and salvaged it. But, you know, it's something that, you know. Didn't he have like a 35-yard, 40-yard run in this game? I saw him break through the line for like 35 yes, or 40 he yards. Did, he did have a big carry. Which means he ended with nine for 41. Yeah, he, he had a, a nice carry and nine carries. I mean, here's the problem with Gurley. Is the, Jason, read off his carries the last couple weeks. Uh, go, I'll go backwards. So he had nine this week. He had nine the week before. That's not how you treat a Todd Gurley type runner. 25 there you go. That's the week bad. before. 12. That's no good. 24, 20. So you got to get him 20 carries. Let's. What is Gurley's rest of season matchups? Because I want us to look at – I mean, this goes, is something people need to know. Yeah, he goes this week to Detroit, who has they've been, been – They've been great. great. Very good. Then Tampa Bay. Okay, middle of the they're road. not bad. They have a not decent bad. running defense. And yeah. the championship game at Seattle. Ugh. So what in the world do you do? You have to start him for the big potential or what? Because yeah. nine carries, nine carries. How do you not start? He's at Todd home Gurley. at least in back-to-back -back games now. He was at home last week. Gross, man. <laughs> or this week. Yeah. Well, you know what? Case Keenum might be back. 
Yeah, and that does help <laughs> a lot. That's what that was just said in a positive. <laughs> I was just said in a positive <laughs> sense, and and because we're digging of, deep because here. of Nick Foles, Jason compl- instantaneously agreed with the statement, which I meant it the way I said it, which is like something might change. It's only an improvement. How many do you think it's Nick Foles that every time he's about to hand it off, he goes, "No, I can throw this ball," <laughs> I can, and he just pulls it back. Is that what it is? If, well, he takes every time he takes the snap, he just thinks contract extension. That yeah. was so sweet. Thanks, Jeff. Genuine question. If you put Tavon Austin as the quarterback and ran Wildcat for the majority Ooh, of the go game, Miami Dolphins would that, and with Gurley on the field, would that not be a better offense than what you're seeing right now? It could be. Three points. It could, well, and here's, here's the thing. Jeff Fisher, after the game, said he just doesn't have any more answers for what's going on because, <laughs> it's good for head because coach. Jeff Fisher is uh, – He's a head coach. That's, that's good. Yeah. So – Maybe we can send an email. We'll send an anonymous email that says, uh, play, play Wildcat. All right. We need to move on, I guess. Gio Bernard had a bad game. That is on me. I thought he'd have a better game. Workload, man. Yeah, five for 26. He, only, he got five carries. That's it. That's when, it. When Melvin, Generally not good. When Melvin Gordon fumbled the ball, you know who I thought was going to really start coming on strong? Donald Brown. Danny Woodhead. <laughs> and Danny Woodhead pooped in his big boy pants. Now, Three total Woodhead's carries done. for yeah. 10 yards. Woodhead. Whatever the inverse of on fire is, like if you're cooling off, getting colder, on ice. Yeah, he's, he's ice cold. Cryogenically frozen. Yeah, not good. Charkandrick West, uh, Jason and I made a bet during lunch Ooh. last week, and the bet was uh, Spencer Ware versus Char West in standard leagues, and I took Spencer Ware because I thought he'd get the touchdowns. This game, Char West, nine for 35, two for nine in the air, and the touchdown went to Spencer where the the way it looked unfortunately to, they hurt both each other say so the way it looked to me is they were essentially uh alternating series it is what it looked like where west gets gets a series like like i just said i'm repeating myself but so no it, no no how does alternating series work yeah Mike? yeah yeah, yeah explain yeah. it to you. uh so the the confidence level in char west it's I'm, yeah. I'm. I would still RB three. I would still flex him. Yeah, but you just you you can't depend on that volume. He can that catch he was the getting. ball. Yeah, he yeah. can catch the ball. All right, Adrian Peterson's worth mentioning. We're not forgetting Adrian Peterson. Eight for eighteen. Yes, eight carries to Adrian Peterson. Uh, but his relevance of discussion is none because you're starting Adrian Peterson in your fantasy playoffs. You're not sitting him down, so there's no, ooh, you know, I'm going to start somebody else. No. Yeah, last time they he had a game like this, they came out the next game and like give him like 50 carries. All right, wide receivers, Stevie Johnson, no targets, no catches, one groin pull. Jarvis Landry, two for five. This is surprising because Landry's been one of the, the most kind of resilient players. In spite of the Dolphins' failures through the entire season – Landry has come through over and over and over again with quantity, but now you have to wonder when you see a game like this and the offensive coordinator changed. Uh oh, and they won the game. Oh yeah, this is this is what I will. They won add the game. In. He had five yards. That was almost ten percent of the <laughs> passing yardage from Ryan Tannehill. That is a really good point. <laughs> Unbelievable. Tavon Austin had a bad game. One for twenty-four. Kendall Wright three for twenty-eight. Randall Cobb. Oh, Randall Cobb. Cobb uh, Fell on a fumble. Otherwise, his game was a complete loss. Well, and, and it depends on your scoring format. And I mean this legitimately. I said this to Jason in the car. If you're a Packer fan out there, you follow the Packers closely, you follow camp and all that stuff. I mean, we're we're obviously paying attention to everything from all the teams, and we're not in it like you are. I think Randall Cobb looks like he's playing about 5 to 10 pounds overweight. Hmm. He doesn't look as fast to me. In and out of breaks, he looks bigger than he's played before. And I'm just curious if that's been something talked about by beat reporters in Green Bay because he looks like he's on the the Eddie Lacy diet. All right, tight ends. Jordan Cameron, Kyle Rudolph, Martellus Bennett. Were you relying on any of these guys this week? These guys stunk. Maybe Bennett. Yeah, well, he was and, my and set some, of the week. Some people might have, have gone with Kyle Rudolph, but uh, like Kyle Rudolph is one to do, when you are depending on him for fantasy, he lets you down. Because that's what he does. Yeah. So, all right. Let's talk for a second. Monday night football game. That that does it for the pooped in the big boy pants section. Tomorrow we'll get into waiver wire stuff. Uh, we'll get you set up for the playoffs. Hopefully you're doing well. I had a lot of uh, tweets from people that were doing well. Some guys, 
You know, they're still in the fight. They're still in the fight heading into Monday night. So Cowboys, they go, they take on the Redskins. I think the Redskins are going to win this game. Somebody has to win this game. The NFC East. I heard something. What is going on? I heard something like. Are if, the Eagles going to win it now? <laughs> if the Cowboys beat the Redskins, they're only like a game pass. Yes, or and that is a fact. <laughs> That's why they haven't put Tony Romo on season yeah. ending. Yeah, and, and there was a lot of people chuckling about that. And when I heard, I said, "Yeah, why not?" Well, they could win it. They definitely could win it because just when you rely on the Redskins to do and, something, and it doesn't the seem Giants, to happen. Ugh. Giants it, lost. Eagles won. Someone's getting in under five hundred. And it's it was really funny when you see the standings of like the divisional leaders. I mean, you got the Panthers, twelve wins. The Cardinals are at ten wins. Uh, Vi- Vikings. Packers, the yeah, which the Packers are what nine? They're both eight and four, eight and four. Yep. And then you have the NFC East, not so hot. <laughs> but let's talk Take about a moment, a moment of silence. Let's talk about them right now. Des Bryant, Darren McFadden, Jason Witten. What is your confidence level for the Cowboys? Minimal. Uh, yeah, I Dar- would... Darren McFadden. If you're in a PPR league, yeah. you don't think Des Bryant? I would start Des if I have to. Yeah. I... <laughs> no, so I... if you have to start I him, s- you would start him. I yeah. still start him. But Sage, what? Are you, <laughs> what? He's I'm making call, fun of the fact. I'm calling that I him said, a Sage. He said, "If you have to start a guy, he'd start oh. him." I just think it's kind of a. Well, my point is, not, it's not very prescriptive my, to my, somebody. My point is, I think that <laughs> there are a lot of teams. I have Des on one of my leagues where I'm I'm starting Sammy Watkins. I started Sammy Watkins over him this week. So let's make it easy. Des Bryant or Deshaun Jackson tonight? Des Bryant. Deshaun was my set of the week. I don't think Dallas is, like I said with Ted Ginn Jr., I don't think they're a team that's going to give up the play to the Deshaun Jackson type player. Is this Alfred Morris time? Is his time coming this season? Mike is shaking his head <laughs> the way that you do when you talk about starting Alfred Morris. I mean, I, I guess so. It, it, it let, if you're going to go Alfred Morris or Matt Jones, let's say they're both on your bench, I would go I'm going to go with Alfred Morris. I agree, but it's just a bad matchup. This, Jordan you know, Reed? I did, I didn't like him coming into the tonight, but yeah, this is this is just a black <laughs> hole of fantasy. You know blah, what's gonna happen? Which you know what means? It's yeah, gonna be this 50. is gonna be fifty to fifty nine <laughs> points, and it's just gonna be nuts. Because looking at this game, it just seems like nothing is gonna happen. You you've got a good defense on Dallas against you know a, a mediocre well, Washington, in, but they're good at home. Is the the situation with Washington? They have been good defensively at home over the past couple games. So you, you are right about that in spirit. Yes. All right. Yeah. Let's get into the mailbag. And it's called a trend. Mailbag. Mailbag. Thanks for that. All right. If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, <laughs> thefantasyfootballers.com. Click on the submit a question button. You can also leave us a voicemail question at 302-464-TFFB. All right, Warren in L.A., which uh, I'm going to take as the city and not Louisiana, but I don't know. Maybe maybe you're in Louisiana. Maybe it's both. Thanks for all the help. <laughs> Thanks for all the help, guys. Thanks to the fantasy footballers that made it to the fantasy playoffs. Nice. But who do I start going forward? I didn't see the end oh, of this, so I wow. just thought he just asked in general. Char West or Spencer Ware? Wow. <laughs> well, uh, Andy and I have uh, Andy and I have. Well, let's our look at back. next week. Let's look at next week. Next week they're playing the Chargers at home. To me, I have no idea. Who to start. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got our water bet, so I've got to say West. You've got to say where, and that means Mike, you get to break it. If you um, are I'm you st- going West, I'm um, I'm still sticking with. If you are in a PPR, you go with West. Because of the catch potential. And if you're in a standard, yep. you go with where because of the touchdown potential. Yeah, I agree with that. Dan in Philadelphia. And by the way, that's our bet was in standard. So, I mean, I agree with Char West and PPR. Dan in Philadelphia. Hey, guys, in what order would you rank Jonathan Stewart, Shady McCoy, and Darren McFadden rest of the season? We've seen an interesting amount of touchdowns from Mr. Jonathan Stewart over the last half of the season. But I still think I lean Mr. Shady McCoy. Yeah, I go McCoy, Stewart, McFadden. What about straight standard league? It, this you, is a standard. Oh, is that what he said? Yeah. You yeah. still go LaShawn McCoy over Jonathan Stewart? Yeah, he's still going to get yards through. You know, if he catches the passes, he might not be getting points for the reception, but he's still, you know, he could put up 45 on through the air. 
So I, I would still go McCoy, then Stewart, then McFadden. As would I. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. He does play. Stewart does play Atlanta a couple times. As, as in good or bad? I think they're going to blow him out. So. Oh, okay. okay. All right, but I'm with you. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about this question here from Marcus in Cherry Hill. Week 14 next week. Should I start Blake Bortles? Oh, we're getting an early start here. Blake Bortles against the Colts. Andy Dalton against the Steelers. As of now, for me, it would be Blake Bortles. Yeah, when we saw Andy Dalton in the Steelers, the Bengals Steelers game last time, we were expecting this high scoring affair. Division game. Andy and Dalton was, in a division game. Yeah, it was very low scoring. So I, I think I would lean Blake Bortles as well. I, I see both as decent options for week 14. Yeah, when they played last time, Mr. Dalton was in Pittsburgh, but had 231 yards and one touchdown. This one will be in Cincinnati. Yeah, that helps. That helps for sure. And that's a tough one. You know, if Bortles wasn't coming off a five touchdown game, well, it's it's five touchdowns plus what the Colts are right now, and we just saw the the Steeler offense dismantle yeah. the Colts. Yeah. And Alan Alan Robinson is magma levels of of hot right now. We will. Uh, I'm going to hold judgment on that call until the rankings go up because I, I I'm not sure who's going to really end up on top until I look into that a little deeper. Because I think I don't want to doubt Dalton in these matchups too much. I mean, he put up a monster game against Seattle earlier in the year. Uh, so, yeah, I'm talking about it too much now. So Yeah, well, one point that you bring up is, so this is a very early question because the truth is we haven't done our research. You know, Tuesday and Wednesday, we look into the matchups deep of the upcoming week, stat our guys out, and do a lot. So it's always difficult for us to answer these questions and feel good about it. Yeah, they're on like off a, the cuff. I'm on a give Tuesday, you... you you ask us on a Thursday after we've done the work and have confidence in what we're what we're saying here. Uh, we feel better about our answers. Yeah, it's about Thursday when I decide sitting Russell Wilson's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's about whenever every week around Thursday I'm thinking, yeah, Russell Wilson. Sit I him think down. I think for the Foot Clan, he he needs to be just a weekly ceremonial sit of the week. Permanent sit of the week? Yeah. Officially? Yeah, so... So you can play him. Yeah, an honorary sit of the week. <laughs> honorary. I like that. All right. Hey, we're out of time. Thanks for listening today. We'll be back with the waiver wire tomorrow. Hopefully you are in the playoffs and winning some fantasy football or titles. Let us know how you're doing. And uh, thanks to Martavis Bryant for winning me money. Whee! Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.